Today I'm going to show you how you can create your amazing digital autograph or signature in Photoshop using one of the new features that makes it absolutely easy. Later, we'll also learn how to convert your signature into a vector graphic so that no matter how big you make it, it will never pixelate. And for this, we will need Adobe Illustrator. We'll also learn how to export your signature and also adding it to your images as well. By the way, I'm going to be using my Wacom Intuos Pro tablet to be able to use pressure sensitivity to create contrast among lines, thin and thick lines, just by using pressure. It's going to be a lot of fun, so without any further ado, let's get started. So here we are back in the magical world of Photoshop and let's start with creating a new document. Simply go to File and then New. Now inside of that, let's create a 5000 by 5000 pixels document. And we're going to type in right there, 5000. And the higher the resolution that you have, the easier it will be and the more accurate it will be to convert it into a vector image. So let's choose 5000 height as well. If your resolution is too high for your computer, painting can get a little bit delay-ish. So it can get a little bit slow, less responsive. So choose your resolution wisely. So if 5000 is too much for you and if your computer is not responding well, you might consider reducing it to 3000. Make sure it's pixels, everything else is fine, and you can just name it anything you like. I'm gonna name it Signature, and just Create. All we need to do now is to create a new layer. And now, step number two is setting up the brush. So you can choose any brush you like, but I'm gonna use a special brush called Thick and Thin Ink. So select the brush tool right over here, and click on the drop down menu. Now, if you're using the latest version of Photoshop, it will be here. If you don't see it there, if you accidentally deleted one or more, you can get them back very easily. So let's say I deleted all of them. So I right click and delete groups. Everything is now gone. If you want them back, just simply click on that gear icon right there and select restore default brushes. By the way, you can also download additional brushes from Adobe. So you can click on this gear right here and get more brushes. So it will take you to the Adobe website and if you're a Creative Cloud member, there are tons of free brushes that you can download. We are just going to use Wet Media Brush and inside of that, the first one, Kyle Ultimate Inking Thick and Thin. Just select that one. It's already pressure sensitive enabled, which means that if we zoom in, have a look at this. Let's make the brush a little bigger so that you can see it carefully, properly. And now, the softer I press, the size is smaller. The harder I press, the size becomes bigger. That's the advantage of pressure sensitivity. Now, if you're using the Intuos Pro line, it also has one more advantage, and that is pen tilt. Have a look how the brush changes when I tilt it. So let's delete this layer. Let's create a new one. Now, let's make the brush bigger so that so it'll make sense to you. Now, as I tilt the pen, I'm going to keep it like this. As I tilt it, see how the brush direction changes, right? So I'm tilting the pen here and there, and it's gonna act like a real brush. So in a real brush, so I have a real brush right here. So if you tilt it, the pattern is gonna be a little different than if you tilt it this way or that way, or if you keep it straight head on, it's gonna be different. If you tilt it a lot, it's gonna paint differently. Similarly, right here, tilt is very essential. So if I tilt it in this direction and paint, you're gonna see the difference very clearly. See, it's gonna paint it this way. If I'm gonna keep it straight and then paint, it's gonna paint differently. So this will act just like a real brush. Now we're gonna be using a feature called smoothing. This feature has been available only in the latest versions of Photoshop. What that allows you to do is that it stabilizes the brush. Let me show you how. So first of all, we'll get back to this brush later. Let me just make you understand the concept of smoothing by going to the regular hard round brush. It will make it clearer to you. Let's delete this layer. Let's start a new layer. Now. At the top here, if you're using the latest versions, any of the latest versions of Photoshop, you'll find here at the top, smoothing, right? Now, it is just a brush stabilizer. Just keep that in mind. If I increase the smoothing to, let's say, 50%, right? And then if I try to paint some lines, see, they're so smooth. And if the smoothing is zero, it's not gonna be, you know, very smooth, right? It's gonna be wobbly. Now, if you're experienced, it can get smoother with time, but then the stabilizer helps you to stabilize your line. That's pretty much it. Now, while we are at it, you might have noticed one thin pink line, right? So if I increase the smoothing to, let's say, 100, you'll be able to see it more clearly. So when I draw, have a look at this pink line right there. That is the line that is helping me stabilize the image. So if I draw, 
there's a little bit of delay between the area that I'm painting in and the area that the brush actually is. Have a look. And the pink line determines that delay and also acts as a stabilizer. Now, what is that pink line? Think of that line as a hair of the brush. Make sense? No? Let me show you. So this is the brush. Here is where you are holding it, right? Now, this is the hair of the brush. If I keep the brush like this, right? And let's say the hair was very long. And if I keep it like this, no matter how much I vibrate, the hair is going to stay at the same place. So the hair is helping you stabilize your lines. So if I move it, the hair is still at the same place. The longer the hair, the more stabilized your lines will be. That's how it works, right? Now, let's go ahead and just delete it. Let us understand a few more concepts of smoothing. Now, inside of smoothing, you have a couple of settings that you can play with. So click on this gear. And the first one is pulled string mode. Let's check this and let's understand this. Now, when I click, you will see a round right there. Now, it will not paint unless you get out of this round circle. So once you get out, it's going to start painting. If you want to take a turn right here, if you paint inside, nothing's going to happen. But just when you go outside, it's going to show you, it's going to predict how the line is going to be. And then you can move forward. So that's another way of going about it. So inside it, it won't paint. It will only pull the string when you touch the circumference or, or the border of the circle, right? So there you go, just like that. Let's go over the next one. I don't like the pull string mode, but in some cases it might be useful when you want to draw corners very beautifully. That's absolutely useful. All right, let's check that off. The second one is stroke catch up. Now, what does that mean? If I check that off, let's see what happens. Smoothing is at 100, right? So I'm painting, there's a little bit of delay. And if I stop, it will stop right there. It's not going to catch up with your motion. If I check that on, if I go here and stroke catch up, if I'm going to paint right there, it's going to see, it's going to, it's going to match up with that brush, right? So slowly, even if I stopped, it's going to match up with that brush very slowly. Now, if I just turn this off and then I paint, it's not going to match up with that brush. If I stop, it stops too. Hope that makes sense to you. But I like stroke catch up, so I'm going to just keep it on because you want to catch up where you just stop. Okay. Now there's one more catch up on stroke end. So if I, if I check that on and if I just stop it, it's going to just instantly catch up instantly. So if I stop it right there, it's going to instantly just create a straight line and catch it up. We don't want that because it's going to create a straight line and might create lines that we don't want. So catch up on the stroke end. Let's keep it off. Now adjust for zoom. This is very important feature. Always keep it checked on. Why so? Because when you're zoomed in, the smoothing might act differently as opposed to when you're zoomed out. So make sure you're adjusting with the zoom. That's the basic of the smoothing. That's all you need to know. Now let's start with painting the letters. So first of all, to start off, let's create two new layers. So click on the new layer button, click on it once again. The first one at the bottom would be a guide, just a simple guide might be helpful time and again to create guides if we need them. The second one is going to be where you're going to draw the signature. So I'm going to just name it signature, right? Whatever you want to draw, you can draw right here. Guide is for just the guides. Now let's get back to the brush that we wanted to paint with. So we're going to go back again to wet media brush, Kyle ultimate inking thick and thin. Let's select that one. Now let's choose a size of maybe 25, 30, anything like that. Let's go for 45. Zoom in quite a bit. I think I need a little more higher size. Let's go for 60. Okay. Zoom in. Don't worry about it. Just zoom in. We have selected a very high resolution. So don't worry so much, but make sure you're not zooming in so very much. Just zoom in moderately. 44 to 50% zoom. That's fine right here. Have a look at the percentage at the top. Now we are ready to paint in. Before we paint, I'm going to talk about a couple of techniques we're going to use right here. The first technique is we are going to start thin, go thick and end thin. In between, you can have variation, but start thin, thick, thin. So we're going to draw a line just like this. Thin, thick, thin. And we are controlling this with pen pressure. So let's say I'm painting my first letter right here. So I'm going to start thin. Don't do it this way. This is wrong. If I start, it looks very bad. I was just trying to draw a U right here. It looks bad. Don't do it. You have to start 
thin. Let's turn on smoothing because it helps you stabilize it. That's the feature we're going to use. 50 is fine. Start thin. Then go thick and then thin back again. This is not the best, but you get the idea. Even if you're not using smoothing and if you're well versed practiced. So start thin, go thick and then thin. Not like that, but you get the idea. Let me just do it properly so that you get, get an idea. So we went from thin to thick to again thin. Now this is not the best because we want to turn smoothing on. That, that's going to help us draw straight lines and beautiful curves. So let's keep it to 40 or 50 ish. 50, that's fine. So that was technique number one. Technique number two is creating guides. So when you are just drawing your letters or anything like that, it's always best to create a guide. And for that, we need to go to the guide layer and draw a straight line so that everything is straight and maintained. So I'm going to click a point right here. Just dab, hold the shift key and then click on the other side. That's going to create a very straight line. Now, as you can see, the guide is not in the right place. We can just move it right there. And now let's come back to the signature layer and then we can always turn it off and on. We don't really need it. Now let's get back to the brush and then we can resume painting. Now let's start over. I know this is not perfect. Start over and do it again. Now to delete all of it very easily, control or command A to select it all. Press the delete key and control or command D to deselect that. We still have the guide. You can also delete the guides in the similar fashion. Control or command D to deselect. Let's get back to the signature and let's start from the beginning. And smoothing 50% is fine. Let's start with it. If you want more stabilization, you can increase it or decrease it depending upon your taste. Brush size, maybe let's go for, you know, 65. Nice. I think the brush is too small. 90 was fine. So let's start. Let's try again. This is beautiful. Now, don't worry about if everything looks good except for one area. We're going to repair later. That's in the next step. The first step is just going on with it. You can always add another points to like that, but that's for repair section. Right? That looks beautiful. Maybe I can just start right here. Yeah, that looks very nice. Now, don't worry about the curve right here. We're going to repair that later doesn't really matter. Now we need some guides. So let's go back to the guides layer and maybe we need to draw a straight line from here. So let's dab right here and then we're going to go to this point, hold the shift key, click and there we go. There we have a guide. Now maybe you can, you want, you can just move the guide right here. Maybe let's decrease the opacity of the guide. All right, let's get back to the signature. Now I can continue drawing the letters however you want. Let's get back to the brush. And now just resume drawing. See, again, we followed the similar thing. We went from thin line to thick right here to thin over here to again thick to again thin at the end. Make sure to keep the brush at the same size all throughout. This is important. Otherwise, it's going to come up crazy. Now, I think I need a line at the top too to maintain the letters. So in the guide layer, what I'm going to do, I'm going to press Control or Command J to make a copy of it. This is the second guide and we're going to place it at the top to just make sure they're probably on the same line going good. Let's go back to the signature. Let's zoom in and take the brush back again and just paint back in. All right. Now, as I can see, the M is a little bit of uh, thick on the thicker side. No problem. We're going to repair it later. Don't worry about it right now. So we have the H and the D. This is kind of style. Now, there's a little bit of thing that we need to repair. No problem at all. And if you want to, if you think that some lines are going to go thicker a little bit, you can do that later. Now, we need to move the guides a little bit down to draw the rest of the letters. So we're going to go to guide copy. Let's select both of them. Control or command T and let's move it right here. Probably move it a little down. Nice. And let's get back to the signature layer with the brush selected. Let's draw the rest of the letters. Yeah, that looks nice. Maybe we need to just repair it a little. Now, as you might have guessed, let's just first of all turn off the guides. It's looking pretty okay, not awesome, but we need to repair it a little bit. Maybe add some 
uh, embellishments and maybe just clear up some stuff. The next step is simply repairing. And for that, you can use a simple hard round brush and eraser as well. So all we need to do, first of all, zoom in and just inspect. Now, right here, I would highly suggest that you make a copy of the signature layer so that you have a backup of the original. So with the signature layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. Now you can turn off the signature layer and work on the copy. Now select the brush. Simple, you can choose the hard round brush from the general brushes. Let's choose the simple hard round brush. And now let's start working on it. First of all, we need to repair that. And you can also rotate stuff. If you are having difficulties while painting, you can hold the R key. The rotate tool shows up. You can click and drag to rotate it and release the R key. It gets you back to the brush. If it doesn't get back to the brush, you can press the B key to get back to the brush. Now, if you want to reset it, hold the R key and click on the reset view. It just simply resets that. Now, I need to rotate it just a little bit and with a hard round brush, let's decrease the brush size. And now let's paint. Now we don't need smoothing at this point. Flow 100%, opacity at 100, blend mode normal. They simply repair the lines properly. And there might be areas that you want to erase. Now there's a way in which you can erase just by using a shortcut. And that is hold the E key similarly. It gets you back to the eraser tool. And when you release the E key, it gets you back to the brush tool. That's wonderful. Now let's set the size of the eraser tool. It's kind of pretty huge. So let's set it to about this size, maybe at about 30-ish. That's fine. And make sure the hardness is at 100% so that whenever you need to get back to the eraser tool, you can actually just directly get back and forth the brush and the eraser. Now let's get back to the brush tool. Now you can hold the E key for the eraser tool. And now you can also try increasing some smoothness so that you can just erase in a particular shape. That's great. That area is now repaired. Hold the R key, click on reset view. That's fine. Is there any area that looks a little different? Right here, we see a little bit of slope. Let's take the brush and simply repair that. Let's try rotating it. Okay, that looks nice. Now we need to use the eraser to kind of clean it up properly. So let's take the eraser tool by holding the E key. And now let's just. Now, if you think it's just not happening, you're just not able to paint the right way. All you need to do, is just press the P key for the pen tool. Now, when you're in the pen tool, just click a point right here and then just click it properly and click another one right here. Now you can create a perfect curve. Hold the control key and Click and drag to just play with the handle properly. Now you have the perfect curve right here. Now just finish it. Right click on it and then make selection. Hit OK. Now simply you can take the eraser tool and absolutely erase it from here. Have a look at it. So clean. Press Ctrl or Command D to remove it. Now have a look at this. Isn't that wonderful? Let's decrease the smoothing to zero. And now let's work on a couple of things, small things like this. Maybe we need to fill up this area with the help of the brush back again. We need to just fill it up. Now I'm not going to bore you with the entire process because it can be a little monotonous. So let's fast forward it a little bit. Now, by the way, if I'm wondering how did I draw that straight line, you can just let me show you again. Let's go back. So if you just click dab, Hold the shift key, click again on the other side. It's going to create a straight line like that.
Now as you can see the repairing is finally finished. Let's have a look at the before and after. So this is the after. Let me show you the before. So this is the before. Have a look. Not so consistent. The lines are just not looking right. But if I turn it off and turn on the repaired one, everything is smooth, nice and amazing. The next step would be exporting it. Now I would highly suggest exporting in two versions, white and black. When your image is too bright, you want to have the black signature on it. You can of course increase or decrease the opacity or change the colors as well. But it's pretty handy to have both the colors there. Now keep in mind in both the cases we need to maintain a transparency when we export it. We cannot export it with a white background or a black background because if we do, if we import it and add it to our image, it's going to come up with that white or black background. So to be able to export it with a transparent background, we need to choose a format called PNG because it supports transparency. First of all, let's save it with a white background. Let's crop it first of all. We don't need all of the rest of the areas. Press C for the crop tool. Now let's drag from the top. Now if it isn't cropping freely and if it's maintaining a proportion, make sure you click on clear right there, right? Now do it from the right hand side, do it from the left hand side, from the bottom and there you go. Hit enter or return. And we have our signature, but you can just delete all these layers. You can keep them absolutely upon you. The most important thing here that you have to do, just turn off the white background or you can also just drag it and drag it to the trash can to delete it or simply select that one and then press the delete key. It deletes that. We don't need that anymore. Now, simply go to file. We are saving the black version first. File export, export as export it as a PNG. Choose PNG and then make sure transparency is checked. That way it's safe with the transparent background. Now let's choose the width and the height. Now of course you can save it at full resolution. That's absolutely fine. But when you add it to your image to be handy, you can save it as maybe thousand by thousand. So let's choose thousand here and height can be whatever the height it chooses according to the aspect ratio. That is fine. PNG, transparency, everything else is fine. Now you can export it directly. Click on export all. I'm going to export it in a folder called test and let's name the signature and black. Save it. That's fine. It's done. Now let's save a white version. How do we do that? Very easy. Select that and then simply press control or command I to invert it. So it was black. It turned into white. Now simply do the same. Go to file, export, export as and then the same thing, 1000, 1020, it will automatically set it up. PNG transparent and export all. In the same folder, let's name it signature white. Pretty nice. Save it. Now we have both the versions. Now let me show you how to add it to your images. So let's open a recent image. You can open any image that you like. So I'm going to go to file, open recent. There was this one that I recently opened. All right. So this is an image from a previous tutorial, which you can watch right here creative color grading and we need to add our signature to it simply go to that folder that's all you need to do in the same folder test and it was a dark image so i'm just gonna drag the white onto photoshop and drop it right here and i can place it anywhere i like let's place it right here. it's looking pretty cool hit enter or return and we are pretty much good to go now, if you want to change the color of this you can simply create a solid color adjustment layer or there's one more way to do it double click on the right hand side of the layer this opens up the layer style dialog box now you can also choose color overlay click on that one blend mode normal and click here single click here and change the color to anything you like very easy all right so that's one way to do it, I'm going to hit cancel. If you are happy with this, you can click OK and OK twice. I'm going to hit cancel here as well. There's one more way and that is simply adding a solid color adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color and choose any color that you like. Hit OK, hold the Alt or Option, click on the line between these two. That way you can directly change the color from here. Anytime you feel the need to change the color, double click here and then choose whatever color that suits you. I'm going to choose, I'm going to go with white. That looks perfect in this case. Similarly, you can do the same with black or change the color to whatever you like. It's pretty handy. Now, all that being said, always have a full version saved as well, both as a PSD and a PNG as well. So let's save the black version. Let's click on this one, Control or Command I. Go to File, Export, Export As, and then make sure scale is 100% for full quality and PNG transparency is fine. Export All. And we're going to save it as signature PNG4. 
and we will use this to convert it into a vector image. Now, the biggest advantage of vector graphics is that it's not based upon pixels. If you click an image with your camera, it will be based upon pixels and those pixels have a color information and a lot of pixels come together to create your image. However, with vector, it's based upon mathematical formulas and that's why no matter how big you make the image, it's never gonna pixelate. So you can easily convert this into a vector. Make sure you're starting out with a higher resolution as we did. It won't be a problem. You can also start with 10,000 by 10,000 if your computer supports it or your computer doesn't get laggy. So let's open up Adobe Illustrator. So I'm just gonna go to my search bar and I'm gonna search Adobe Illustrator. Let's open that up. So here in Illustrator, let's create a new document, create new. And the size doesn't matter much because it's vector anyway. 2000 by 2000 is just fine. You can set it to that and we can name it sign and let's go ahead and create it. So here we have the sign document open. So just drag and drop the signature. Let's open up the test folder right here and signature PNG. Let's drag it and drop it into Illustrator. Now if you're a Mac user, this might not be possible to drag and drop right there from the file explorer. You might have to do this. You might have to open it, maybe make it smaller. And from here, you can just drag it and drop it. Same thing. Now let's make it a little smaller by holding the shift key. It will maintain the proportions. There we go. Now, all we need to do is this. This is pretty simple. Click on this image and then choose image trace in the properties. If you cannot see the properties, go to window and then make sure properties is checked. Image trace, there you go. And it's gonna appear with a lot of presets. So just select black and white logo right here. It just hit okay, doesn't matter. Now it is converted into black and white. Now it's gonna come up with some you know, artifacts here and there, something it's not gonna go right, but this is high resolution, so the conversion has been done properly. So no matter how much you zoom it, it's gonna be amazing. Now, have a look at the edges. They have rounded corners, right? So you want to avoid that. So simply click on this button, image trace panel. It's gonna show you all these uh, values. Now you can go to advanced and just set it up, just play with it. Go to advanced. How many parts do you want to have? If you go too low, it's gonna create very less parts and it's just not gonna look right. So we'll create a pretty higher number of parts. If you go too high, it's gonna go wobbly. So if I go 100%, it's gonna create a lot of, lot of parts here and there and it's just not right. So 87% is pretty okay. Now let's zoom out a little bit. This is fine, this looks right to me. Maybe we can go even lower. Now once that is done, how many corners do you want? So if you go too high, it's gonna create more corners than you need. And if you go too low, it'll be more rounded. So if I go too low, have a look at this. This is so rounded, we want more corners. Now have a look, it's so nice and wonderful, accurate, beautiful. Now noise, we want less noise, let's decrease it. And this is more useful for images with a lot of noise or a lot of pixelation happening. But in this case, this, these settings are fine. Now, if you have imported your signature with a white background already, you can just click ignore white. But in this case, there was none. So anyway, just click on it so it will ignore all the white. But there was no white in this case. Now, once you have that done, just click on this button called expand, right? Click on expand. In the previous versions, it might be at the top and now we have converted it into a vector. You can also just play with it or edit it in any which way you want. For example, just click on this one. You can hold the control or command and the direct selection tool will show up and you can play with any point. Click on it and you can just play with any point. Just edit it any which way you want, but that can be a different Illustrator tutorial. Now let me just zoom out and it is all great. Now I can save it as well. So go to file save as, you can save it as an Illustrator file, an SVG file, whatever file you choose. I'm gonna save it in Illustrator in case I wanna edit it or want a full version later. So I'm gonna find the test folder again and inside of the test folder, sign, let's name it vector, save. And you already know the advantage. Let's hit okay first. No matter how much we zoom in, 
it's just not gonna pixelate. So that's how you can create your beautiful digital autograph or signature very easily in Photoshop. First, we start with a higher resolution document. In this case, we chose 5000 by 5000 pixels. You can even go higher or lower. The higher, the better. However, if you go too high, the computer might start to lag down. If you go too low, it won't be that high of a quality. Just make sure you find that right balance. Next, we chose the brush. In this example, we chose Kyle's inking thick and thin brush, which you can find as a default in Photoshop. If you don't find it as a default, you can always reset the brushes, or maybe you can also download it from Adobe if you're a CC member. Now, you can start painting your signature, but to stabilize it, to stabilize the brush, you can turn up smoothing. Now, when it comes to smoothing, when you paint big stuff, smoothing should be higher. When you paint small stuff, lower smoothing. Just play with it see what looks good to you. Once you have done it, the next step would be repairing. So you can just copy it on a new layer just for backup and then with the eraser and the brush, start repairing. After repairing, save two versions of it, white version and black versions. And you can also convert it to vector inside of Adobe Illustrator. Just import the image and image trace and then expand. Just play with the settings of the image trace if you want to and you're pretty much good to go. So that's all there is for this tutorial. Hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe, ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tip, trick or tutorial. Thank you so much for watching and I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting this channel on Patreon and helping keep Pix and Perfect free for everybody forever. Thanks a lot for all your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.